All right, so our first video uh, in our managerial accounting series is going to be on the distinguishing characteristics of managerial accounting. It's basically just a very gentle intro into the course. You know, I really what, what I want you to pull away from this video is what are the differences between managerial accounting and financial accounting, and what are some of those stereotypes that we can kind of get rid of in our discussion. Um, so again, when we think, I think a lot of people, when they think about managerial accounting, their first instinct is that, oh, well, this is just based on manufacturing. This can only be used for a manufacturing company. And while its roots, of, the roots of managerial accounting are based in manufacturing accounting, we've, it's morphed and it's changed over time, just like our, our business environment has changed. We can see trends where we're, we're kind of switching from more of a manufacturing-based industry into more service-based. So we see a lot more service-based companies um, arising now than we do manufacturing. So managerial accounting, again, while its roots are based in manufacturing, the concepts have been um, modified and are able to be applied to all different types of businesses, including servicing and merchandising, as well as still manufacturing. But when we talk about these concepts as we work through this chapter, um, try to broaden your scope and, and think of these, these things in terms of all different types of businesses because they really are uh, applicable to all different types of businesses now. So we'll start off with a little definition of managerial accounting. Uh, it says, a field of accounting that provides economic and financial information for managers and other internal users. Okay. Um, pretty generic definition, but what I want you to focus on here is this idea of internal users. Okay, that's key. So one of the differences between financial accounting, which is what you would have done in your first semester accounting course, working on income statement, balance sheet, trial balance, working trial balance, all of the journal entries, all that kind of stuff. That's all financial based accounting. Uh, has a, typically a, a completely different set of guidelines that govern how those types of reports are, are um, prepared and presented. Uh, and the focus of those types of reports from your first semester class would have been for external users. So we're putting together our balance sheet and our income statement for current shareholders, for the bank. We're preparing them for potential shareholders and potential investors. So um, the focus is external. When we talk about managerial accounting, we're focused internally. So that's the managers and the people that work within our own company. So when we produce a report, it doesn't have the same strict guidelines as far as presentation and process that an external report would because we're just using it for our own purposes internally. And what you'll find with all of our managerial accounting reports, the key concept or the key concern is, is it relevant to the decision being made? If I'm producing a report, you know, it doesn't matter what it looks like, there's no defined setup that the report has to take unless it's been specified by a manager, right? But as long as the report that I'm producing or the managerial, in, uh, the accounting information I'm, I'm presenting, as long as it's relevant to the decision being made, meaning as long as it helps someone make a decision and it's accurate, then that's all I need to worry about, okay? So we're focused internally. We're not quite so worried um, uh, about the, the flare and the flash and does it meet all these presentation guidelines and it doesn't need to be audited. Basically, is the information that you're giving me, does it help me make a decision? And if, and if it does, then you've kind of met the criteria that I'm looking for for that report. All right. So that's what managerial accounting does. It, it helps us make decisions. It helps us give us a better understanding of our business. What does it cost us to do what we do? Right. And all this information is focused on internal users. Okay. Like I said before, it does apply. Managerial accounting does apply to all types of businesses. So you can see in the first two business or in the two first two bullet points there. Uh, it, it applies to all different types of business, so service-based uh, businesses, maybe like a, a home cleaning service, merchandising companies like Walmart, they sell us stuff in a merchandising format, and then manufacturing companies, which we all know. Uh, it also uh, applies to all forms of business, so it can be a small proprietorship or a partnership or even a, a large multinational corporation. These concepts are universal. We can apply them to any different type of situation. You could apply them to your work life if you're working for someone, or you could also apply them to your own life if you're planning on starting your own business. Okay, these concepts can help you in any different type of situation. All right, the fact here and the key concept here is this last bullet point is the the reports and, and managerial accounting helps us um, aids us in making critical decisions. Okay, 
The next slide, and the last slide in, in this presentation, is kind of your go-to chart for the chapter. Basically, again, what I said I wanted you to pull out of this first video is, can you, can you understand kind of what managerial accounting is and how it differs from financial uh, accounting? So in financial accounting, again, this was your focus in your first semester course where you would have talked about balance sheet and how to properly put it together and how to classify assets and liabilities. And you would have talked about the income statement and how that's presented, you know, sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. All right, it was very structured and it was very, this is the way we do it. Managerial accounting isn't, isn't like that so much. Um, you may have a prescribed format for a report, like that pre-existing report that someone's come up with in the past. Um, but it's not like any of this stuff is being audited externally, okay? Basically, report design is, is based around not what um, everyone else is expecting to see externally. It's, it's based around, you know, how do I want to see it to help me make my decision, right? And that's how we design our reports. So you'll see that down the middle of this chart here, there's a list of, you know, five or six different um, concepts or key characteristics and then we can take a look and we can see how ma financial accounting differs from managerial. So if we take a look at the first one here, who are the primary users of the reports? Well we already talked about this. When you look at financial accounting, again what you guys did in first semester, uh, it's, it's based on or it's prepared for external users. So shareholders, creditors, regulators, potential investors. When we design our reports, they follow a criteria or they follow a design methodology that's based on those types of people using the reports. So we're designing them to give them the information they want, the external user. Under managerial accounting, it's, it's the opposite. It's internal users. So it's officers and managers and, and other employees of the company. So when we're designing our reports, we're designing it for those types of readers. It, we want to make sure that our reports give them the information that they need. Okay. Um, what types of reports are, are created? The second, the second cr uh, characteristic there? Well, for financial accounting, we do financial statements. We do our balance sheet, our income statement, our cash flow statement. Right? Those are the types of things that we do on a monthly or a quarterly, semi-annually or annual basis, depending on you know, the frequency of the company. Um, managerial accounting is, again, just those internal reports. And it can be any number of internal reports. Okay which also leads to the frequency of the reports. So from financial statements, like I said, some companies will prepare financial statements monthly, some may do it quarterly or annually. Um, for managerial accounting, the reports are as frequently as needed. It could be a weekly report, uh, it could be a monthly report, an annual, uh, but it could even be as short as a daily or an hourly report, right? Depends on how closely you're monitoring some part of your business. And you'll see that a lot of as you work through um, kind of your education, you'll, you'll hear key terms, things like dashboards, right? And what a dashboard is for, for a business perspective is a list of kind of, a, it's just a, a quick view of a whole bunch of key indicators, KPI, key performance indicators um, that a manager may want to follow. Like what are our, what's our daily sales volume right now? Um, how many of this product have we sold? How many of this product have we sold? Um, maybe I, want, I need a report, an hourly report that'll tell me um, how many units we're producing on a certain product line every hour, right? They're just, they're, they're, it's just information that helps you make decisions. Uh, for example, um, if I'm getting an hourly throughput report, which tells me how many units I've been able to put through a certain process, a certain uh, product line, if I know I'm supposed to be doing, you know, a thousand units an hour, and my production reports for the day, uh, I'm only averaging 750 units an hour. Well, I know I got a bit of an issue, and I can instead of waiting until the end of the month or the the end of the week, I get these hourly reports. I can go down to the floor and I can see what's going on. And I can try and figure out, you know, why why are we behind? What's slowing us down? And and maybe I can solve the problem before it gets out of hand. Right? So the types of reports, or the frequency of the reports for managerial accounting are basically as often as you want them. Okay. Uh, what's the purpose of the reports? For financial accounting, they're general purpose reports. They want to give a, a broad picture, you know, not, not a lot of in-depth, in-depth detail about the company, but just a general overview of how the company is doing. Whereas managerial accounting, they're, they're special purpose. They're very specific, they're, the reports that are designed very specific, specifically for certain decisions. So you can have a report that is, helps, make, um, helps a manager make a single decision. 
and you may run that report for for a month two months and then it may go away but the report itself uh, the purpose of the report is to help us make a decision you know so that's that's our our guidelines uh, the content of the reports uh, they give us quite a, a lengthy list here, a bunch of bullet points. When we look at financial accounting, uh, again, because they're general purpose reports, it pertains to the business as a whole. Um, when they says they're highly aggregated, what that means is it's condensed information. I don't so show you every single sale uh, that I had during the year. I just give you a single line item on the income statement that says sales. Right? I might not even break the sales up between the different product lines. I might just group them all together. So it's highly condensed. Um, we do have to follow double entry accounting, so you have to do, you know, your debits have to equal your credits. And when we prepare a set of financial statements, they have to be prepared in accordance with GAAP, right, which is um, now called ASPE. Uh, if you're a publicly traded company, you'll be following a, a, an accounting methodology called IFRS. Uh, but again, the key thing to understand there is um, it's very... Uh, it's very defined, it's very prescribed as to how you're supposed to prepare those statements. When I look at managerial accounting, basically the content of the reports, um, they can be very detailed, uh, they can pertain to small individual subunits of the company instead of the company as a whole. So I might have different sales reports for every single product that I sell as opposed to just a single sales report. Um, they're very detailed. Um, Again, the standard isn't PE, GAAP, ASPE, IFRS. The standard is, um, does the, is the report relevant to the decision being made? And if it is, that's all that I have to make sure that I follow, right? As long as that report is helping someone make a decision. And the verification process, we talked about this already. External reports, the financial statement stuff, it has to be typically audited by an independent accountant. Right? Larger companies have to go through audits, or your bank may require you to go through an audit. But they're typically audited by an independent uh, accountant. The verification process in managerial accounting is that there's no audit done. Now, you're, that doesn't mean that your manager might, might not review the report and make sure you're pulling the, accurate, the information accurately and presenting it the way he wants or she wants. Uh, what that means is you don't have to get any type of external accounting source to verify that the numbers that you're preparing are accurate and that they're, they're just and that they're not misleading. Okay, so there's no independent audit that gets done. All right, so those are the key differences between managerial and financial accounting. Um, again, you need to understand, you just kind of need to grasp what the differences are so we can set our base moving forward. Uh, what you should do for the rest of the chapter is you should start to briefly go through some of the trends that are, that are uh, taking place right now in managerial accounting. Uh, things like a discussion of the value chain, um, you know, activity or sorry, activity-based costing, managerial accounting re with regards to technology. So how are companies using technology? They talk about e enter 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 <laughs> enterprise resource planning uh, in the textbook, uh, as well as B two B business to business transfers. So that's basically like e email money transfers and. Um, electronically sharing data instead of you know mailing things uh, the way that we used to. Uh, they talk about things like just-in-time inventory, TQM. These are all things that you can read. They're in the overhead slides. They're in the textbook. So so prep yourself on that. Uh, the first chapter is pretty light, right? It's just kind of getting your bearings, getting you you set up for the rest of the course. Um, so it's an easy start, uh, and then we'll move on to the next chapter, um, which will have a different set of video slides. All right. So again, review this if you need to, print that overhead slide out, make sure you've got it memorized and you know the differences because that's a, the, a key component to this chapter. Okay, cheers.